Hi guys and welcome. Today we're going to make some clusters using up some scrap um, strips that I've got from a project I've just finished. So if you have a look, I've got lots and lots of strips and I thought I'd make some little clusters with them by just, you know, sticking them together, putting a little bit of ink on them and then just some um, ephemera pieces. This one I've just used lace and buttons. It can be as simple as that. Uh, butterfly, flower, if you've got some labels, butterfly. All right, so let's push them to the side and let's grab out some scraps. Actually, I'll finish off this one that I was making. So this one's just um, three pieces of scrap glued together and then I've just got a bird on there that I'm just going to stick on like that. And then that can go on either a belly band, a tuck, uh, on a notebook. You can put some words or a label out there. I'm not gonna put a label on it today. We'll just use it, leave it fairly plain, just so we can add to it later on, on this one. But they're great to have in your stash, um, just some little clusters that you can throw on pockets or little notebooks or tucks. See, that can even be a page tuck if we want it to be. We can put it on another um, strip of paper. You know, for example, a bit wider like that and then just have it as a tuck in our journal but that looks awesome or you know stick it on like that and have it as a whole page tuck but so much you can do with them once you've got a little stash of clusters all right so let's grab some strips so these are left over I made an ephemera folder yesterday and um, I'll put the link of that below if you want to check that out as well so I'm just cutting off um, strips here I don't really have you know measurements so I'm sort of just eyeballing it some of them I'm going to make you know fairly long like that some I'm going to actually make shorter so they're like more mini clusters and you can add as many or as little strips that you want depending on the effect that you want to want to get and then I'll just glue it together what you can do, I don't, my sewing machine's um, away in a shipping container at the moment, um, so I am just gluing them, but you can sew them if you want, if you like that effect as well. And what I would do if I was sewing, I'd sit down and make a heap and just put a paper clip sort of in a position that I want it, and then when I get to my sewing machine, just keep sewing and running them through and then adding your little embellishments at the end. I'm not pre-inking my strips. I just go over and do a rough ink over the top. You can um, sit and ink every piece you want, but you can get just exactly the same effect by inking that when you've finished like that. So I'll just pop that one off to the side and we'll make a couple couple of those some of the scraps I've actually used a border punch and I've got this punch here uh, which will will punch some more out but just to give your scraps a little bit more contrast or you know points of interest let's go I'll turn it over so you can use on your double sided you can use both sides if you want to so if you wanted to have that butterfly in there which we might do that I'm just going to keep the edges torn on this one I'll tear it up the top there and I'll lose a bit of my butterfly but it won't matter and then I will ink these ones first just because they've got a little bit more definition to the edges And the colour I'm using today with my Distress ink is Frayed Burlap, for those of you that um, <clears throat> want to know that. I'm 
just going to add a very thin little strip in there. Just as like a little border, I guess. So it just highlights that um, punched out piece a little bit more. Now you could effectively leave it like that because you've got your butterfly, but we're not going to. We're going to add, we might add a butterfly to that one. Oh, what else have we got? We've got a B. Some mushrooms. Sometimes it's just having a little play around with it. Sure, I do have a very small butterfly. I might put on an angle up there so we can still feature to the two butterflies. So sometimes it's just having a little play around with your focal point. How good does that look? <coughs> Excuse my coughing today. I am still on the tail end of a virus and you've probably heard me say that in the last few videos but it just seems to be hanging on and on and on. So we might go a bit wider strip and we might go shorter for this one. So your strips all don't have to be skinny. Sometimes, you know, we're left over with some good chunky strips like this and then we might want to add add some layers on top just like that actually I'll turn that around that way Maybe a thinner piece. Yep, that looks good. What I've done too in the past, like I was saying with the sewing, is you just throw it down and paper clip it together, don't glue it. That way you're going to go through without you know sitting and procrastinating with your scraps you're just going to lay it down and think well i can't muck it up because i'm only just paper gluing uh, sorry paper clipping it together i'm not gluing and then that one we'll just put a little bird on actually i don't I might put something just with that brown strip I'll go that butterfly it's actually got like a brick brick background paper it's really cute and that was a digital download I'll try and find the name there was just uh, if you just google fussy cut a fussy cut butterflies is what I googled for that one on Etsy all right we'll come back to this strip that we have put together there I might go mushroom but I might put a bit of lace or something underneath that let's have a look here I don't like too much of that so I might cut that off and I'll save that because even just putting a bit of material under it like that can highlight it as you can see. You might even end up using that. Let's go with the lace. Actually, no, I like the I like the scrap material, so let's go with that. This is a great way to use up your scraps, both you know, with your laces. 
your strips and clusters is something we use a lot of in our journals I'm using a quick dry adhesive here, it's a Helmers. And I'm using art glitter, which I need to remember to keep putting the pin in because it dries up quite quickly on you. Okay, so on to the next one. This one here, we might use a bit of this one. So this one I've used, um, this EK Tools Punch. I do have these ones in my shop, so I'll put a link to my shop down the bottom. I use this one a lot because you get like a lace lace effect and you could effectively go like that, which we might do. We might just do a shorter cluster. And we might have a bit of cardstock just as a base. Just find one that's not too wide. This one here. Just give it a quick ink. Once again with the decorative edge, just ease it to ink before, and even though that's a background piece, we'll just ink it because we're not going to feature it. And then we'll just run a strip of glue up each side. Just to the edge so it's not coming over into the pattern like that. And then we might have got this, it's a very faded green type pattern on this strip. It's actually on the back of, it's a 49er market. Uh, I think it's called Nature Study. <coughs> Absolutely beautiful papers and I used them in um, I made an ephemera holder journal yesterday that I'm putting in my Etsy shop and um, it's just absolutely beautiful papers and I've got some absolutely gorgeous um, scraps left over so I'm just going to stagger that a little bit just to give it a bit of interest up the top because we've got some uneven ones down the bottom there so that one we might actually put some flowers on. I'll just have a look over in my, and I wanna keep them fairly small, but I wanna do some clusters. Those two are already stuck together. And so are those two. So I'll just put two, a dab of glue on each. And I'm going to angle them like that. It even looks good just with the, the two flowers on it. Gorgeous cluster, just in your fairly neutral tones. All right, so let's do another one. Actually, I've got this really rich flower here. We might look to use that and we might do something fairly simple again with this wide, wide strip. But 
but we want to add some some more texture some more interest in there and I'm going to have that hanging over I might shorten that down a bit because I don't want all my clusters to be too long and skinny although you know these ones you can you can turn on a side like that okay I'm feeling like it needs just a little strip of something else which We might do that so you can see that I've got the edges uneven just adds all that extra interest to the little cluster even though we're working predominantly with straight edges you can still add some texture with uh, different sizes I won't need to ink that one. All right, so we'll glue that one down. These are so much fun, guys. And you know, at the end of the day, you can't you can't make any bad clusters really, um, because you're putting stuff on there that you you already like because you've already used the papers or the cardstock in other projects. See, that looks good even like that. And you could put that on in your journal with a label on it. So it's good you get to have some um, plain ones like that too. We might make leave some plain that we'll make today. I might make another one exactly the same as that actually. Because I like it so much as a plain. I just love the colour of this flower. So you can see there by having the different lengths and then the diff some texture in it. Got a bit of a texture in your background there. You could even punch out circles and have them to, you know, lay that on. But that's absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to make another cluster while I've still got the scraps handy and so simple don't throw your little bits like that away either A rough inking. I actually think I've already inked that. As you work in threes with any project that I'm making, and then a focal point, but you can you can realistically lay as much as many of these strips together as you want and it's good to have some plain clusters in in there like that so depending on your journal when you go to put your journal together you know you might have a bird theme so you can throw a bird on there you might be going with butterflies, throw a butterfly on there. It, they're simple to add to at any stage, but it's good to have a few plain ones in your stash like that. All right, so let's put some decorative pieces together on this one. Actually, I'm going to cut it on an angle. And then this one. I'm having three and then we might add another strip which is this one
You make that one a little bit shorter, I think. And then we might add a strip in the middle just to cover up that join. <coughs> and then we can add something in the middle there. So I've got these beautiful butterflies punched out that we might um, layer up. And this, that is um, a Stampin' Up! punch, both those butterflies. I've had it for many, many years. And there's a um, matching stamp set, as you can see. I've got some texture there. Let's quickly ink these ones. I really love these um, border punches and I want to do more with them because rather than just bordering a page, you know, you can make some great clusters or, you know, just add some texture to a page. EK Success. I've got a lot of Stampin' Up! punches as well, but EK Success or EK Tools, they go by both names. That would have to be my absolute favorite punch. The quality of them is so good. You can always turn them over if you're eyeballing something and, you know, match it up. Keep it a little bit, a little bit 3D. Just see if I've got a different colour little one. Oh, yep, I do. Looking for a little um, dark one. A little dark brown one, but I don't seem to have one. We'll just go with the green. Beautiful, and another another cluster done. All right, let's grab a couple of strips now of our patterned paper. And I'm going to go a little bit shorter with them. So if we turn this one over, it's got like a blue. And let's make a like a banner. Banner end on them just for something different. And the same with this one, actually, I might go just a tad longer with that one. But I do want to get some, I've got another piece here somewhere. I do want to get some more of the um, pattern into it that's similar. No, they're all fairly plain. I might use that side, it's probably better than that side, so it hasn't got too much pattern on it, but it's got a little bit, a little bit of uh, different texture. So that'll look great once we've inked, inked that up. Okay. Got a 
Give me a pace. And I'll make a banner out of that as well. Actually, I like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about the coughing, guys. So I, I was really quite ill with this virus. Um, I did, I did do a test for COVID, and it wasn't COVID. Um, so, I, but I, I was ill for a couple of weeks, and but the cough now just seems to be hanging on. So I don't know whether. It's because of the change in season. Whether or not because I've had the air conditioning on. Or whether it's just part of the virus that, you know, that dry cough just lingers. I really love that. So I'm thinking a bird, a bird on that one. Although I do have this absolutely beautiful butterfly. Actually, I like the butterfly. Let me just try the mushroom. Nope, definitely the butterfly, I think. Make another one of those and we might put um, something a little bit different on it. So to banner, you just cut a piece out. You can sort of make two triangles. So you cut a triangle out. Gives you like a banner ribbon effect. It's been a while since I've worked with banners. Um, when I used to make a lot of cards, I used the banner effect a little bit. Although I used to be more precise, so, you know, with junk journaling, it's so free and so much fun to just eyeball stuff because, you know, you don't care if it's not perfect. It took me a while to let go of my perfect demons, as I call them, um, because, you know, sometimes I, I can be a bit of a perfectionist when I want things to look so good, but... It's really been a nice change for me to, to do the junk journals and just be a little bit more free with your creative juices, I call them, or your creativity in how you sort of put stuff together. I'm going to butt those together. So it's giving some nice contrast um, on each end on that one. Now, what to put on on there? You could go with, I've got these beautiful leaves. These beautiful leaves there. Um, let's see if I've got a darker one. Oh, that's gorgeous. I'm going to go with that one. So I love to have uh, these once again as a stamp and then I've just fussy cut it. But I love to have different things in my ephemera than just your normal. So, you know, if you can get a, a stamp set with leaves or flowers like that. And this one's, um, it's a real rustic leaf. 
as you can see it doesn't stamp perfect which is what I love about it two different completely different looks as you can see but using exactly the same papers the same effect so so much you can do if you wanted to throw some buttons down there for example if just you know the leaf's not there for this exercise you know you could throw some buttons down there so which we might do a, a button one and change let's go with a piece of that a piece of this I'm still going to banner it so I like the edges poking out this one a bit longer I wonder how this one will go bannered let's, let's give it a go Yep, not too bad. Now another piece. Something along the lines of a brownie colour, but I don't want to go that other dark one. I have enough. No, it's too much like the other colour. nip a bit off this and I'll stick to the darker side there let's go go a skinnier strip I hope you guys are sitting back with a cuppa um, enjoying this process sometimes it's good to to watch people just you know actually make projects like this and talk you through their thought process behind why they do stuff or why they put stuff together because it helps with your creativity as well otherwise um, if you're not sitting back enjoying a cuppa I hope you're crafting along with me and you've dragged your scraps out and you're getting some good ideas now those two so this one I'm gonna stick on top so we should only have to glue I put glue on this top one so it's another way of layering as well lovely now let's pick out some buttons I want to stay fairly small I think and we'll stick with our set of three I really love that see how quick it just comes together I feel like I'm all fingers today working with these small ones sometimes I get the tweezers out I haven't today so working with smaller pieces you can feel like you're all fingers sometimes uh -huh, I love that that's absolutely gorgeous I might make another one with those three but not not with the buttons when you you got so many scraps and they're already on your table you and if you make something you like then make a couple because you know you're going to use it.
and they don't all have to go in the one journal. Or, you know, guys, you can make a few of these and you can give them away. Give them away to friends. Do up a little uh, cluster pack. If you're in any Facebook groups, um, then definitely, you know, do a little random act of kindness. <coughs> Excuse me. And send, send that through. Now, I've got to find another dark piece. Like pay it forward because um, it's it's cost you nothing. We're working with scraps, so you know people that aren't junk journals would throw these scraps out. So you know scrapbookers and card makers, they throw all the little off cuts out. Whereas we don't. We save them. We love them. So just give it a quick, quick ink. I'm not going too heavy on the ink today, as you'll see. Sometimes I love being um, really heavy handed, but um, I don't think it needs it because we're working with a lot of different, you know, con contrast angles. Once again, we butt them together. We only need a little bit of glue either side. So I'll just show you something. The beauty of eyeballing things and not measuring. Look at that. It's the same papers. You get a different look. You know, this one's longer or this one's wider, longer. All right. So what are we going to put in the middle of that one? What about a little punched out leaf? a flower I do love that but it's a bit bulky let's go to our other flowers why don't we put a flower on there that's actually a really good size and then we can perhaps put a button as the center of it Or or a smaller flower like that. Actually, you might do that. So before I commit to that flower, let's have a look at a different color flower. So you can see it just changes it completely again, but I do actually like the uh, the first one. But it's always good to, you know, trial and error. So we've got these these ones there as well, which look awesome. I'll hold that one out, and we'll do um, something with that one. Just give this one a quick ink around the edge because it was a little bit light on the paper, and we do. Because it is a focal, we do want to feature it. And then a little dab. In there.
gorgeous so you can see the backgrounds the same and we've got two completely different looks on that which I absolutely love all right so let's let's punch let's use that punch because I really like that but let's do it on a different color cardstock Actually, let's do it on the green. So with your border punches, I'm not sure whether you've used them before. When I first bought one, which was many, many years ago, I thought, oh, it doesn't go right along. Like, you know, looking at that, you would think that it punches that length. Well, it doesn't. So then it actually took me a while <coughs> to work out that you're punching small sections at a time. So then you move it along and then you line up the holes on this pattern here. Like that. And then you punch again and then you move it along. And then you punch it again. So that's how they work. But yeah, it did, um, it probably makes sense to you guys, but it did take me a while to work that out. Not everything's straightforward, you know. And you've got some confetti there if, if you wish to play around with that. <clears throat> All right. <coughs> Excuse me. I haven't talked this much in a while, so it's... Um, starting to play havoc on my throat. And this one here I really love. It's like when you tear something out of a book, you get that that edge, which I'll show you. See that? So easy to use once you know how. All right, actually, I might use this lace. I might just go three pieces, tear that, tear that, ink it. it glue it and I'm going to put a flower on that and something just really simple using your scrap little bits of lace and then this flower I'm not going to ink it it's got a little pearl center I think they were little birdie flowers from memory and something really small which I absolutely love the little clusters we might make a couple of the smaller clusters with that so if we go just to two and that length them two together actually I might put a strip behind that Throw that material on there that we cut off the lace. And then what 
what have we got? Actually, we've got these nice mulberry, or they're not mulberry, but they're um, silk, silk flowers. They were, um, I ordered some hydrangeas and they come in big heads and I ordered a few different colors. So you can imagine how many flowers I have. And they're gorgeous because no no two are the same, like they're all sort of like variegated. I like the brown on this one. So for the centre, you know, I could have put a brad on that. You could put a diamante. I'm actually going to find a smaller flower. Once again, this is the um, little birdie flowers, and they come in a variety of sizes. gorgeous I love these little clusters absolutely beautiful might make a couple more guys and then we'll do a recap on what we've actually made today I really love that butterfly so let's do something in the blues now we've done a banner so let's let's the edge punch on this blue cardstock. Might team it with some cream. And I might use this one. Let's go all out on this one. I did intend on using more lace today, but um, it hasn't turned out that way, so which is fine. I mean, I don't don't have an abundance of lace scraps. I've got more of these strip scraps. So I'm happy to, um, you know, use my border punches on these ones. I don't want to feature too much blue on this one because we're using a butterfly with a bit of blue in it. So let's grab a, a neutrally type strip. I like this one because it's got some writing on it. Give it a quick ink. Uh, 
I had to look for that piece. So they've, all the scraps are starting to look the same to me um, that are sitting on my desk. <laughs> like these little off cuts and that. I thought, oh, which piece, which piece did I have? Now do I want it layered that way? Or do I want it, want it layered that way? I think that way. And I might even cut that down just a just a fraction. And then we'll just add our butterfly on there. You know, you could go, actually I might go that way for a change. That way I can go across the top of a pocket or down the bottom of a tuck. So you don't have to have everything up the other way. I absolutely love that. So you can see what I've done there is, um, because I was using something with a bit of blue in it, I wanted to bring in some blue into the cluster itself. But there you go, guys. I mean, drag out your scraps. If you if you look at the the pile I still have beside me on my desk, um, I don't know how much of a dent I've actually put in it, but I have used some of it, so I'm really happy. And more importantly, I've added some clusters to my stash that are very much needed. And I am working on a butterfly journal at the moment. So i um, got some absolutely beautiful clusters to go in that. Um, love all different sizes. So sorry about my dirty desk. Um, all different sizes that you can throw on. You know, you can put them on the front of a little notebook, on a tag, a tuck, a pocket. Um, it's endless, really, of what you can. I really love that one. It's really earthy so it's really endless in what you can use these for and they're really great to have in your stash don't forget though make some plain ones like that which I'm gonna do off camera make some more like that that you can when you decide what theme or how your journals going you can just throw you know even just a label of some sort on there you could go like that um, and it's instantly on there you can you're gonna throw a butterfly on there butterfly mushroom there's so much you can do but yeah definitely keep some plain in your stash I would highly recommend so we've got your mushroom there punched out and stamped butterflies butterflies these ones I use glossy accents on so I do have a video on that guys check that out because they do that one's the same they do just add a little bit of extra something something I like a little bit of shine and then that one because we had the butterfly there we used another butterfly up there flowers beautiful little flowers buttons you can do so much with buttons and lace that one I've just thrown a label on there. So two strips and a label. How simple is that? Three strips and a bird. Really love the colours in that. And then we've just got another butterfly one. But yeah, guys, um, I hope I've inspired you to drag your scraps out today. Um, don't ever throw anything away. I usually keep all my strips together and um, love making little strip clusters like this because it just adds so much interest as you can see you know banner the ends 
get your uh, punches out you know if you don't have a border punch like that you've only got a cropper doll or a hole punch just get it out and go along and make you know some some holes in there um, but I hope you've enjoyed that and um, inspired you to like I said drag your scraps out make some clusters these are great to have in your stash so when you're putting your journal together they simply you know go through you'll realize how quick it is to have things like this in your stash but thanks guys um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I look forward to seeing you on the next video thanks guys bye